So what does that arrow mean? When we're talking about chemistry, what does that arrow signify or tell us? So in the reaction below, we have aluminum and hydrochloric acid. And when we start out, all we have is that aluminum foil and the hydrochloric acid. But when I put that aluminum in the hydrochloric acid, the reaction starts. Now the arrow means something because these are changing into these reactants are going to products. You can see the bubbles. That's the hydrogen. And we have aluminum chloride in the solution. And this is disappearing. It's going away. Eventually, all we have are the products. So the arrow tells us that this reaction has taken place and it's an irreversible reaction. It's not going to just change back. We could maybe do it with a lot of chemistry, but not by itself. So the arrow tells us these substances are reacting to form new substances. And in chemistry, a lot of the mystery is what's happening here. We can see these pretty easily, but the change, that's hard to measure. When we do that, we're talking about reaction mechanisms. So let's just look at another type of arrow you'll probably see in chemistry. So it's right here. This is the equilibrium symbol. And what it means is some of these are changing into these, but some of these are changing back. So they're going back and forth. They don't have to have equal amounts on each side to have equilibrium. It's just that some reactants form products, then some of the products come back together to form reactants. We can see this pretty clearly. Over here, we could change the position of the equilibrium. We could add more chloride ions. That would force it to go this way. Over here, we could add more water. That would force it to go that way. And each time you did that, you'd see the colors change. This is the equilibrium symbol. Another one you'll see quite a bit in chemistry. One last symbol. This one is very different. This is for resonance. Essentially, we could have a double bond on the top, this side, or this side. These are called equivalent resonance structures. So when we draw Lewis structures, it's a little bit complicated. We want to show the double bond can shift, so we have to draw three structures. We use this arrow here to show that. But they aren't switching back and forth. Really, it's just an average of these three. So we end up with the bond here being one and a third bond here, one and a third here, and one and a third here to account for the different resonance structures. So those are the three arrows in chemistry. You'll see all of these in general chemistry. So I hope this helps. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.